Hey there folks, what's going on? My name's Extreme Man, and today we're going to do a little breakdown on what happened on the Cloud9 G2A versus Cognitive Gaming games, and why I honestly believe that Cognitive Gaming is the biggest fear for NA right now, and you know, I'm going to break down a little bit why they took that second game off of Cloud9, and what happened that first game that really prevented them from executing their strategy that they did so well in game two. So. Let's talk about this first kill right here. So this is MLC Stealth. Uh, you know, he's level 3. He's clearing the wave as Jean Quay, as he does. You can see, he's doing it very safely. You know, making sure he doesn't take... Well, he takes a little more poke than not necessary, but he takes more poke than expected. And he's walking towards the mid lane right now. Pauses. And there it goes. What happened right there is MLC Stealth uh, disconnected from the game. Uh, Cog didn't notice it at first, or maybe they did and just decided to go with it. And they killed him for it. Um, right after this, a pause comes out from Andinster, after the everyone escapes from combat. Mostly talking about you, solo lane. And there comes out the pause, accidentally unpause, and the pause again. So, what happened right there is MLC Stealth DC, and that kill went to DJ Pernicus. That's problematic. Well, uh, DJ Pernicus' role is not necessarily that of a typical support. Um, one of the things that he does, again, he's notable for playing Guan Yu. Not because of any one part of his kit, but because DJ Pernicus in general plays a sort of support-like, but at the same time damage, uh, damage roll. With the healing, he can provide a little bit of sustain for his team. With the ult, he can provide some CC and lockdown. With his, uh, Talu Assault, he can shred protection, so as you can see, protection stolen. You know, that hit really helps. He doesn't play, you know, the full-out, uh, Andinster God of... Al Kuang, which is, I'm gonna kill you, I have a blue pot, you're gonna die. He plays the more traditional, or not the traditional world, the MLC, or sorry, Andister plays the traditional role in that the jungler is supposed to be, I'm going to kill you, please die. DJ Pernicus plays this more nuanced specialty role of, I'm going to support the team and I'm gonna make sure that my team gets through this. Now, let's go on to the next fight, which will happen in just a few minutes. Alright, so before I go into the next big fight, I'm going to take a really interesting play that occurred on the side of C9 right here. So, Aurora's taking a lot of damage from minions. Uh, Kabam's not in lane, he had to back earlier. And Aurora takes a good amount of damage from minions. And Jeff Henless sees this, like he knows, hey, Aurora's pretty low, I'm going to, you know, stay safe. So, Aurora and Kabam clear the wave, uh, you know, not necessarily the most efficiently, but again, efficiently enough. Uh, Jeff Henless says this, or er, says, hey, Aurora's pretty low, I don't know where he, he looked like he was heading towards this general direction with the purple buff, uh, and Endenster has already been rotating over here. So this, you know, because of the fact that I'm not 100% sure on this, Jeff Hemless saw the or, or the pretty low health from Aurora, called for the rotation, and then uh, Andister rotated over, they got the purple, and right here, uh, Andister has barely escaped with his life through this strategy, which will come out in the second game a lot more. So this strategy is cognitive gaming staying as a group and rotating as a group. So right now, no one's in mid lane right now. You, you can see there's XP being wasted plenty right here. But there's four people rotating for a buff that was already gone. Three people rotating from mid lane to, you know, ensure the safety of purple buff. Which ultimately didn't happen. And this is a big factor in cognitive strategy. They like to rotate. They don't like to rotate individually. They like to rotate as a group. They are a big team. They're a team about synergy, right? And they don't they don't do the traditional routes of, you know, just having the jungler rotate. They will over rotate to ensure the safety as well as the kill potential of other events. 
and you'll see a Kabam will be very much left here alone compared to the sort of babysitting that Jeff Hinla does on Barracuda. Uh, not saying Kabam is a bad ADC, or a better ADC than Barracuda that he doesn't need, you know, the support of Jeff Hinla, but Kabam recognizes his role is just to solo farm and get to the late game, especially as G-Block. G-Block is a very late game hard carry, and his goal is not to not to feed basically until we can get to the late game. Now, here's a three-man rotation in mid. Could have been a kill right there if Best had landed his spear ball, but unfortunately the reactions of Andenster allowed him to get out of there on time and safely escape with his life. Jeff Henla as well in the mid lane here, so Andenster goes off to do his own jungle farming. Meanwhile, what does DJ do? Uh, DJ, first off, walks in, scares Jeff Henla off a little bit. And here's where it starts. Uh, this this is where the beginning of the end is for Cognitive Gaming. So let's take a look. Right here, uh, we have three members of C9 versus one member of Cog. And well, yes, you can say, sorry about that, that Best and Aurora are right around the corner. It doesn't matter. The fact is, DJ Pernicus is out of position here. There was a miscommunication between uh, Aurora and the Best, Aurora and the Best, and DJ Pernicus, such that DJ Pernicus rotated underneath the red buff to see if it was there. And well, the rest of C9 was waiting there for him. Uh, and Best and Aurora didn't rotate with him. Therefore, he uh, C9 is going to rotate in and ultimately uh, fight DJ Pernicus. So as you can see right here, again, DJ Pernick is caught out, and another, not necessarily a miscommunication, but uh, very much a, we sort of caught out here. Uh, again, amazing rotation as well from Barracuda. This is one of the biggest things I think that led to it as well. The fact that Barracuda can rotate over like that using his ultimate. Um, well, you know, that was the major factor in causing that fight to go the way it did. It looks like it was almost going the side of Cognitive Gaming, but Barracuda with the ult landed most of the damage straight onto the best and then just cleaned him up. And then DJ Pernicus was, you know, finished up in the mid lane. Barracuda and C9 are able to take the first Gold Fury at 7 minutes and about 8 seconds in. Now let's take a look at the next fight. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the mid lane right here. We have groupings up from uh, MLC and Jeff Henla, as well as uh, Pern, Aurora, and the best. Now it looks like they're gonna go for this rotation, sort of like what they did last time. Uh, again, this is another instance where Pern is caught out here, and he goes to engage on Andenster. Now, this is sort of a mistake. Aurora went around this way, uh, the best went around this way, and Aurora got sh er, DJ Pernicus got shredded. Now let's back it up and take a look at what he got shredded by. So, 924. So we're gonna reverse, and we're going to head to... Speeding up a little bit. The nine minute mark, and we're going to follow DJ Pernicus through his adventures in the jungle. We're gonna take this at half speed to make sure we catch every detail. So, DJ Pernicus rotates in, rotates in, sorry, Aurora and the best are, you know, they're waiting to see what happens. This is the same sort of strategy that they have last time. Uh, he runs straight in Anister and gets a lot of damage off on Anister, while, meanwhile, uh, Anister cannot damage him too well. And, looks like Perns knows he's in for a fight here, Barracuda holds straight into DJ Pernicus. G uh, Jeff Henley goes down, and Barracuda shoots him with a 1, and Pern's very dead there. And Aurora, you know, goes straight up, straight down, a little caught out by Barracuda. MLC Stealth uses his beads and ults to get some damage out, and Best cleans up Stealth, Stealth cleans up Best, it's a 2 for 1 trade in favor. Oh no, that was actually a completely even trade. Two for two trade. They traded out Anemster for Pern and MLC for the best. So, again, that was a 
trade that was definitely not in Cognitive Gaming's favor and was definitely in C9's favor. Well, it was completely even and no team won or lost really off of it. Um, that's better for the team that's ahead, right? So now C9 is up. They're at 27,000 gold compared to uh, Cognitive Gaming's 2,500 gold. Sitting at a solid 1,500 XP lead with the Gold Fury as well that happened uh, shortly after that. And they've just sort of been able to keep their lead, keep consistent, and that's sort of what C9 does, right? C9 farms very well. They make sure that they stay consistent. If they, you know, start winning fights, or they don't turn on in the late game, right? They usually continue on an upwards trend. Like, if they lose early, they don't tend to do as well in the later games. Um, they are sort of a momentum-driven team. Meanwhile, Cognitive Gaming can sort of turn around, but at the same time, they're also a very momentum-driven team, as you can see from their strategies. Uh, grouping up as well in the mid lane is three, and we're gonna go ahead and skip to the next fight. Alright, so this is a classic grouping by Cognitive Gaming, and it's not necessarily a fight, but it illustrates some key points. So, as you can see, Andenster is sort of out of position here, but he knows his role as Alquang, uh, or rather, his abilities as Alquang. He allows, or uh, he can go into his water illusion, which will allow him to disappear and escape from the jungle very easily. And this is sort of something that Cognitive Gaming does. Instead of following their jungler, or instead of letting the jungler go do jungler things, uh, they sort of group up together. And this is another thing that Cognitive does as well, is they sort of allow DJ Pernicus to be out of position because he's sort of a tankier guardian. He's supposed to be a, a support. But at the same time, he's building into damage items, but he is the support of the game. So he gets picked here. Uh, ult's coming out of MLC Stealth. And, you know, disengaged by Pern. And in the meantime, Baskin gets Meerkat in the solo lane. But this is sort of a classic thing that Cognitive Gaming does. Um, is that they tend to focus group around DJ Pernicus um, and will split up for certain key points uh, where just like they're trying to scout out the position. Here's another three man grouping from Cognitive Gaming. It looks like they're trying to get a pick onto someone here, but they're also trying to support, you know, uh, their ADC here. Industry goes for the best and cleans them up. Uh, just, you know, damage over time from, uh, just, air, er, sorry, uh, burst damage, high burst damage from Al Kuang and just the team in general allows, uh, you know, Cloud9 to sort of get that excellent, you know, the excellent kill. And this is sort of the downfall, this is where the downfall of Cognitive Gaming begins and sort of, well, you can see it really happen from here. The downfall was uh, the ults that that Barracuda made onto the four people in the mid lane right at that sentry ward, right around that sentry ward, right there. Uh, simply put, Cognitive Gaming is very focused around this idea that DJ Pernicus is a tank, that he can tank up enough damage and sort of allow the rest of the team to group around him and will they focus down DJ Pernicus uh, instead, you know, either Pern will escape and they'll turn around, or Pern will die and the rest of the team will still focus on, you know, the other team. Uh, Pern's job is sort of a distract and protect thing. Again, here, Jeff Henley gets caught, grouping of four, grouping of five, actually. I uh, just couldn't pulse used. MLC Stealth with an excellent stun mechanical stuff. Uh, again, ulting on to DJ Pernicus, making sure that he gets that damage online. This is a really good fight, but it's still not going to turn the favors in. Looks like Andister does clean up the best. Baskin cleans up Kabam, and ultimately it's a 2 for 2. 3 for 2 in favor of... No. Oh, let's see. 3 for 3 in favor of Cloud9. 4 for 3 in favor of Cloud9. Maybe a 5 for 3. We'll see if they can get Meerkat. They get Meerkat. So, a D aside, off of that one fight. Again, this is this is the downfall of uh, cognitive gaming. Is that DJ Pernicus has not been allowed to build himself. 
DJ Pernicus has been sort of shut down. Uh, he died pretty early on, I think. Or no, he didn't die pretty early on, but he, he got the first kill, but it never amounted to anything, and the rest of his team died and was sort of shut down from that first true engagement. Uh, off of the backs of the rest of that fight, uh, C9 was able to sort of basically do what they wanted to do and allowed themselves to get ahead. And ultimately, this is just C9 steamrolling and doing things that C9 does, which is mostly staying back and farming. Stealth, playing typical mid laner. Uh, and yeah, this, this is what happened in game one versus Cognitive Gaming. Let's take a look at game two, in which uh, Cognitive Gaming actually takes a win. So here's the start of the game. We're about a minute 30 in. Both teams are sitting fairly even. Uh, gold difference is negligible, about 30 gold. Uh, doesn't matter. So let's take a look at what happens. So Jeff Henla puts a shield on himself, tanks the wave up a little bit. Uh, Kabam and Aurora have taken a lot of damage from Barracuda. Getting another shot right there, just... Uh, Apollo has a fair amount of really good clear and uh, early poke just because of his passive as well as his one. His one does a ton of damage, especially if you double level double level it instead of getting getting a mez. Uh, you know, so he's able to clear the wave a lot better than Kabam can. And Kabam again has to get to, has to get his jump here. It does double level the ricochet, but you know, ultimately just it, it doesn't do a whole lot. So Barracuda backs it off. Uh, you know, this sort of is seen as a failed gank attempt. You know, Pern just goes in for the rotation, heals up his boys, and looks like he's heading off into the jungle. In the meanwhile, Pern, DJ Pernicus actually rotates around, and with the taunt from Aurora, just shreds Barracuda. Kabam goes in the back line to sort of prevent the damage. This is smart of Kabam in this instance. He wants to make sure that, uh, you know, everyone survives with a good amount of health. And this is where the fight leads towards mid lane. Best got his ult first, and Barracuda goes down for the count. Uh, so, what's, uh, Stealth goes up into the air. Uh, Indenster, again, just a, a, a general big rotation on to the uh, onto Cloud9. Again, everyone backs right now. Because, and one thing that's note, or definitely of note, 3 minutes 16 seconds, they're going for the Gold Fury when they can, after that next pick. So that was a true engagement, especially it was a death onto the AD carry. The, well, the death of a mid laner is important. The difference between a death from a DC and the death from an actual fight is a lot. In a couple of ways. One, the death from a DC does not feel like a real kill on your side, you don't feel ahead from that necessarily. Uh, mean, secondly, oh, this is also big, the huge invade coming out of DJ Pernicus. They want to kill Jeff Hinla right now, because this is where they're going for the Gold Fury. Jeff Hinla uses his ult, DJ Pernicus takes a lot from it, but he's got a health pot ticking. They're going to grab his purple buff, uh, again, shutting down, not shutting down, but definitely hurting the Apollo here, and a four-man rotation as well. Four minutes into the game, and we're getting a four-man rotation on the side of Cognitive Game. So this is where they go for the gold fury. This is the smart play to do. They go straight for Jeff Hinla so they know they have the secure. The ult as well from Kabam allows them to really secure it, do a lot of damage, and they're just gonna head back and, you know, stay safe. This is probably some of the smartest, uh, you know, this is something that Cognitive Gaming is doing that I don't think any other team is really doing well is that they're grouping up, they're taking key picks and making objectives out of them. That gold fury happened at, like, what, four minutes in? That's not gonna get you a whole lot of gold, but it gives pressure, and it gives you, it gives you morale as well. You know, it, I mean, what happens the next time, you know, they get the pick on, they get the pick hard, they're diving for Jeff Hinla here. And it's like, what are you gonna do about it? Not a whole lot. These two got flipped somehow. 
interesting. Uh, as well, so Kabam goes for the blue stone pendant into boots compared to the traditional uh, Barracuda Death's Toll into Devo's Gauntlet. Sort of an interesting start. Uh, well, a little less damage online, you do still have the blue stone to make up for it, which is a lot more higher damage than the death toll, but the death toll is a more traditional sustain route compared to the uh, blue stone, you know, full out damage, I'm going to kill you mode. Uh, as well as the, the damage boosts indicate this as well, getting higher damage into your abilities and just higher damage into you in the early game. And that's it for now. Let's head back to the next big fight. Alright, so here's the next big fight coming up. There were a couple ults and rotations over it, but they ultimately, uh, you know, nothing happened of it. So, ults on the side of C9, no one has theirs up. Uh, there's another engagement where, you know, Pern barely made it out with his life. Uh, but he got, he got, you know, used. Uh, stealth, level 1 beads, uh, pulled out. This was just a ton of CC on the side of Cog... Or, yeah, on Cognitive Gaming. So they used the portal, um, used the pole, uh, the Athena's taunt on the side of Aurora, and, you know, waited for the, the shield, the beads to pop, and then just uh, the best used his portal to ensure the kill happen onto, onto Stealth, and Stealth had his ult down, his shield, the uh, Geb shield was down, there wasn't a lot to be done about that. Meanwhile, Andister again, another fight where Andister tries to get as much damage as he can out, and everyone just backs. So this was, again, just another uh, a grouping thing, not necessarily a positioning thing, or uh, also a lot of mechanical uh, insight on the side of Cognitive Gaming. Like, they know, hey, he used his beads there, we can kill him here. Uh, just like positioning stuff, you know his ult's down, you know his uh, beads are down. Uh, like, they used his beads here, 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 here to, uh, you know, to try and escape the taunt, and then just best properly positioned his portal. Uh, it's simple as that. In the dual lane, it's been fairly even. Uh, Kabam's a bit ahead. He's got a, he's building to a soul leader, which is sort of the hot flavor of the month for ADCs right now. Uh, what the Soul Eater allows you to do is basically it gives you a little extra or a little less life steal and a little less power in favor of a lot more health. Now this is again, notice where the Gold Fury is. It's right about to spawn, and it spawns right now. And what does Cognitive Gaming do? They join up as a group to try and get picks. So Jeff Henlow uses his ult, and we'll see stealth goes up in the air, and Jeff Henlow has to get out of here here. Anster almost picked up, Anster cleaned up, and again, Barracuda trying to pop him up. Jeff Henlon, very low, but still cleans up Kabam, and DJ Pern, DJ Pern cleans up Jeff Henlon, and where do their sights go towards? Straight towards the Gold Fury. Another pick looks like it's coming here, MLC Stealth, Taunted, and, well, Athena. Big ult's coming in from Meerkat, and Barra has to get out of there. Baskin, way too deep to go for Pern. He's gonna get himself caught here out of position, but the dash, the excellent mechanical timing of it, he'll escape. And while they didn't go straight for the gold for here, you saw what happened. Right, the moment they got the picks onto, you know, uh, I think the original pick was Stealth and Andenster. They went straight for the Gold Fury. They just got, they kept having to re-engage and re-fight, fight these battles again. Baskin not able to die, Barracuda not able to die, and they traded out ultimately. I, I believe it was, I, again, a couple for one, or sorry, it was like three for two in favor of Cognitive Gaming, but that's still a trade you don't necessarily want to make. Now, again, this is sort of cognitive style, right? They want to group around, they want to get to the Gold Fury. They want to make sure that they have control of, you know, these major Mac objectives. They want to do them whenever they can, whenever they get the pick. Again, the ult coming out from best here. They're looking to collapse on Sobek to get a kill. Can they do it? Yeah, they can. 
fast and gets cleaned up, so what does this mean? They're gonna head straight for the Gold Fury, all four of them. Kabam is sitting in lane, fighting Barracuda right now. Even with the rotation, the extra man on the side of, you know, Cognitive Gaming. On that right side, they head straight for the Gold Fury. Like, they're, they're peeling for it. And Kabam rotates now as well, he's got the ult to secure it. And they're doing the Gold Fury. Cognitive Gaming is playing this game of we get a kill, we get an objective. We get a, a good rotation that, you know, a, a trade for us, a one for zero. We get an objective, we go for an objective. And we'll see Stealth caught out of position here. He ulted, not early, not late, but he he was just out of position there. He couldn't, couldn't possibly secure the Gold Fury or steal the Gold Fury there. Jeff Henley was there as well to help try to steal it, but ultimately uh, Cog has this sort of group mentality of being able to reposit or refocus a target. And what they did is, uh, you know, they saw, hey, there's a player here. I'm gonna go kill him. Okay, thanks, bye. And they all turn towards him and kill him. This wasn't an individual effort. This is cognitive gaming working together as a group. This is a sort of dynamic that we don't see as often. Um, you know, a, and not a hive mind, but very close to it, in that cognitive gaming is ensuring themselves together as a group. Again, three-man rotation to get uh, to get Meerkat his blue buff. Like, that seems excessive. And again, they're, they do lose a little bit of XP, XP, you know, by splitting things on a regular basis, stuff like that. But they do it for security, for safety, and to make sure that you know, nothing can happen. So here, Kabam rotation. They're not like again. They'd get nothing off of it, so it's all good. But again, this is not something that a rotation like this isn't typical of cognitive gaming. Well, it is fairly typical of C9. It's two v one. Cognitive gaming does not want something that's just a little bit in their favor. They want something that's entirely in their favor. They rather have a fight where they can, you know, 3v1 without, you know, a sweat and get the pick easily without anyone taking a whole bunch of damage rather than having a a 2v1 in which there's a chance of getting a 1 for 1 trade off instead of having a 2 for 1 clean kill. So I could keep watching the game, I could keep analyzing, but you're going to see the same thing over and over again until they get to the late game, where it'll just be, it'll just be Kabam doing individual objectives like the Gold Fury and everyone will be focusing on Fire Engine. Or, you know, a lot of the same old idea and the ideology behind it. The, the grouping up as a team to ensure that we as a team are together, that we as a team are a thing. It's just so strong right now, and it's something that Cognitive Gaming is doing that no other team is doing effectively. So this is my whole little spiel on Cognitive Gaming. Thank you so much for watching, I do appreciate it if you stuck all the way through the video. Please leave a like, a comment down below, or subscribe if you enjoy watching these videos. Thank you so much folks, and have a great day.